let's discuss the Soromon state of mind, specifically when it comes to uh, storage and preserving things in the ledger. So as I open this up, I want to hide my face and then focus on the code again. If All right, perfect. So uh, we we're back to a, a brand new project. Uh, I think we, we should rename this to uh, state. We're working on the state, uh, uh, on, on the Soromon state. Okay. So sooner or later, um, every developer finds themselves in a situation where their application is not working as expected. Um, I would say raise your hand if that happened to you, but I can't see you. So I assume everyone's had this problem. Um, and we all know the techniques of how to solve these things like unit testing or logging intermittent values. Um, using breakpoints is, is a cool uh, way um, to inspect stack frames and so forth. Uh, but unfortunately, smart contract developers often don't have a rapid workflow for finding bugs or faults in their contracts. And you know this leaves them with the only option of, hey, I wanna test something out. Well, what do I do? I take the current code for the contract that I have and I either, one of two options, I deploy this to the test net um, of your blockchain that you're working on and I test it against the wallet um, and that's gonna be uh, if you're a very efficient under a minute uh, or it could take a little longer or your, your second option, if, if the blockchain is, is uh, well equipped for developers, let's say, you can probably deploy to a local Docker running instance. So that's all fine and dandy, um, but there's a limit and folks, I guess, tend to not uh, test as much as they're used to because of all the hurdles. And so Sorbon takes this uh, challenge head on uh, by providing a guest environment um, right in the SDK. So you'll be able to see in the documentation if you follow along this path where uh, you write a contract and immediately you write a, a unit test uh, for a function. And this is using your regular Rust cargo unit tests. Um, with usorbon.app, I leverage that functionality of, a, of an environment um, to provide um, features to, to rapidly test um, your, your contracts. So right here, um, we're gonna we're gonna explore state because let's let's you know face it. If if we're writing a hello world, probably bugs won't affect anything too much. If we're dealing with state, then bugs all of a sudden become an issue. All right, so let's uh, let's begin. How do we store something on the ledger? We're going to head and start with the same no STD, so we're not going to import the standard library. We're going to use the critical elements like contract implementation and environment within, you know, and let's grab the symbol as well from the SDK. And we're going to declare another uh, contract. Contract. Okay. And then we're going to implement this contract with a couple of functions. Um, let's declare this the proper way contract implementation. All right. So, what do we want to test to sort of showcase this? Well, first, let's compile. Compile often, right? Um, never too often to compile. We're gonna have some uh, some data in the storage in, on the ledger and we're gonna save and retrieve that uh, data. So we're gonna have a couple of functions. So let's declare save as the one uh, that will put data into the ledger. And uh, we're gonna uh, store a number. <laughs> uh, it's gonna be U32. Now save is gonna return the same number just the sake of it, I guess. And um, we're going to load a number environment and uh, it's going to return that number. 
So it's essentially save and load two functions for this contract. Let's compile this again, make sure nothing breaks. Um, oh, okay. Well, I guess I compiled it a little too early. Uh, let's return some value here. Um, oops. Okay. So we have, uh, we have something of an issue. I remove this. Let's make sure this compiles again. Um, quickly back out of this. Oh, we don't need to back out of this. We're just not returning a value for. Should have trusted the rest compiler errors. All right, so we call save. It takes in a number. And by the way, this is one of those nice abstractions that you get with um, an environment like usorabon.app. Let's say a function takes in some arguments, right? In this case, it takes in a number argument. Um, that's a U32. Well, we have a nice modal that we can input our number, um, click confirm, and that's going to call our function. As far as integrating into Soraban, um, there's another nice feature that's um, part of the, I guess, Soraban contract specification. So when you compile the contract, there's um, some amount of um, that byte code that's compiled allocated for uh, specifications. So let's say you know, save something, rather save a number to the ledger. Okay, let's compile this again. We can see that the modal now incorporates our uh, comment for that function to describe what exactly this number does or, or what exactly this function does. So we're gonna click confirm and uh, let's add a, a, another uh, specification here or the docs for this function, load a number from there. Compile this again. And, uh, oh, it doesn't take any arguments. It's not gonna display that, that modal, that's fine. All right, um, let's return the number as our first exercise. So it's gonna be U32 and uh, 42. We get 42 in the console here. And right, so now the magic part. How do we take the number that we provided in our modal here and put it into uh, storage? Well, we need a certain key, something to um, store it, it under. And for that, we're gonna declare a constant and uh, it's going to be a symbol value. So that's why I'm imported symbol. And it's going to be, I'm not original with names under these circumstances. So I'm just going to use storage. And over here, we're going to take the same environment that we've used before for logging. And we're going to reference storage. Okay. Let's compile this. Not the error I was expecting. So storage is a method, not a field, as we can see inside of this uh, error message. We can go ahead and inspect what exactly storage is in the documentation. And um, let's see exactly how to use it. So we can see that there is a set function under storage. It takes a key and a value, okay? So with this new knowledge here, um, since this is a method, not a field, we're gonna call this. And since we observe that it has a, a public function uh, set, we're gonna call that set function to store what we're storing. So we're gonna provide storage as the key, right? And we're gonna provide number that we're storing or the value. Have this, so save 42, confirm, all right. How do we know that we did store this correctly? Well, that's why we have this load function here. And how do we retrieve something, right? We used set to store it. How do we retrieve it? Well, we can go back to the documentation real quick and see that there is a get uh, function. 
associated with storage and it returns an option that's a result that potentially has that value. So there's, um, you, you'll see that there's uh, some unwrapping that needs to happen. Cool. So we go ahead and reference that same storage, call that same storage and call the get method. And we wanna get the value under storage, the, the key. So what do we get? We get um, an error because we're trying to return a U32. So let's return a U32. Now we get another error that says um, we want to have a U32, but we get an option. So whenever we're getting a value from storage on Soroban, any kind of in a, in a Soroban contract, we don't know whether the value is there, and we don't know whether that value is the value that we're going to return in this case, a U32, or it could be a symbol. We just don't know. So we can go ahead and uh, unwrap this option and see if that works. Well, then there's the question of um, it returning a result. So at this point, we unwrap the option. We're sure that there's a value there, but we're not sure whether that value is a U32 value. So we can do clever unwrapping here, uh, but I'm just gonna do a, a silly unwrapping. So it panics if it's not a U32. And let's compile this again. So let's go ahead and save 111 and load, okay? So we just put a number onto the ledger under a specific key and we retrieved that uh, number from uh, the ledger. We got it and experiment with 420 and load the value, do something else, it works. Okay, so there's a complication that I wanna implement here. And it's a little bit different from what we did uh, during Paris Blockchain Week. Uh, this is something that uh, Tomer told me to do. And so I'm just going to see if this works. If it doesn't, well, hey, this is a demo. These things break. So here's the, here's the gist. I want to store a number for a specific account. So I, I want to store numbers uh, under accounts. I just don't want to store a single number. I want to store it as many numbers as they have accounts. So we're going to uh, modify this save function here a little bit. We're going to take in a user. Uh, argument or a parameter that's called user. That's type address. So address refers to any valid blockchain address on the Stellar blockchain. Um, and then we're going to take in a number. We're going to return the same value. And let's just see what this does. So if, if I call save, I'm greeted with this uh, second field here. So when you saw him on, you know, this modal expands uh, to however many arguments that your function takes. And there's another cool abstraction here. When dealing with accounts on the blockchain, it can be like really tricky for someone just get, getting started, right? How do I know how to generate one? Do I need the private or the secret key here? Um, that's a lot for someone that's, you know, into JavaScript or something. Um, so for that reason, usorobon.app completely abstracts away um, interactions with accounts by using just regular names. So how many users does the system have? It has three users, Alex, Bart, and Callie. You can select e either one. And that in the background abstracts it away into a specific address within the, back, uh, within the current environment, which is running in your browser. All right, so we select Alex one. So nothing happened really. We just you know have a, a, a parameter that we're calling this function with, but we're not using it yet. So let's try and use this. Okay, so under storage, instead of putting everything into the same um, key, under the same key, let's try and use user. Okay, so let's compile this thing. It compiled. And let's call Alex and let's do 10, okay? So that sort of kind of worked, but how do we sort of debug this, right? Um, we can probably do a log here. Um, although maybe we should just use the load function. 
Okay, I'll just do a little load function here. So when loading previously, we only had one key. Now we have any number of keys that uh, correspond to each user. So instead of using storage, we're going to use a uh, user. Okay, so here's um, here's a, an experiment. So let's we we saved. Uh, I think we saved. Let's say save uh, ten under Alex again. So let's load Alex. Oh, we got a ten. So that worked. Let's try Bart. It trapped. Okay, so the trap means that um, the value doesn't exist, but we explicitly tell this thing to unwrap, 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 um, not caring about the underlying value. Um, so we can go ahead and sort of test this out. So here's this log macro that we used before. And uh, we'll call this with an arrow just to have some string value in there. And let's see what that returns. We probably need to do some matching here. Um, Not for the type, I think I'm going a little over the, the description here, but the point being is that we can store values under uh, whatever key that we want, and the key can be anything. In this case, I just displayed that it can be um, a specific address. So we'll just go over each uh, user. Alex is gonna have 11, Bart is going to have 22, and uh, Callie is gonna have 33. And let's go ahead and check each one. So Alex, 11. Okay. Callie, 33. And Bart is 22. All right. So that concludes my second demo for uh, the Sorbonne State of Mind. If anyone wants to, again, experiment with this, please tweet me on Twitter at Sorbonne Dev, and I'll make sure you have access.